The latest generation of the Moto Control Bi-Xenon Harness is designed to provide smooth power to HID ballast and a high-low system such as a Bi-Xenon projector. We're going to go over the different connections on the harness here to make sure that when it's time for installation, there's no questions whatsoever. If you have any doubt about it, all of the connections on the harness are actually labeled and there's also a diagram on the back of the packaging that comes with the harness. So, going over the harness in a little bit more detail, all harnesses have an input. There's only one connection like this on the entire harness. In this case, it's an H13 or 9008 input. If you have an H4 or a 9007, this is going to look a little bit different, but there will always be three wires going into it, a blue, a white, and a brown. This is going to go to the factory outlet that comes from your car and is currently plugged into the halogen light bulb. This is going to provide the signals to the relay whether or not it's to do the high or the low beam function. Now, from there, we have two sets of outputs on the harness. One set of outputs that has yellow rubber grommets, the other set of outputs that have orange rubber grommets. The yellows are for the ballasts. There's two of them, one per side. Now, the, the way that the harness is spaced out, one set of wires is a lot shorter than the other, and that's because they're designed to be plugged in to the accessories, the ballast and the high beam on the side of the car that you plug the input to. The input, you're going to want to do that on the side closer to the car battery, ballast for that side, ballast for the passenger side. Now, also on the harness is these uh, ones with the, uh, the orange rubber grommets. These have a little bit thinner gauge wire. They're also labeled high beam. These are going to go to the bi-xenon solenoids on your projectors or HID systems bulbs. From there, you're left with three other connections. They're just loops. Two of the loops are grounds. The grounds come off of the connections for the ballast. It's extremely important that these be grounded directly to solid metal. If you have a factory ground, you know, where other accessories are grounded to on each side of the engine bay, which is very common, we recommend using that as a grounding point for these as well. Make sure that you don't ground them to a painted surface, a plastic surface, or anything less than perfect. Otherwise, the system may not work as it's been designed. The last loop has the uh, inline uh, fuse in it, and this is going to go to the positive battery terminal to feed 12 volts into the system so that when the relay is signaled by that factory input, it has the power to supply to the ballast and those high beam solenoids. The very last point of interest here is the actual relay itself. The relay itself does not need to be mounted anywhere in particular or grounded. However, what's important is that when you do mount it, you actually mount it so that the wires exit out of the bottom. This will make sure that no moisture can ever get into the relay pack or the connector at the base and corrode it and possibly leave you with a headlight out. So don't just leave it dangling inside the engine bay because otherwise the wire can seep down through these wires penetrate the multiple rubber seals and ruin the relay. So again, it's very easy to connect. Everything is 100% plug and play. Follow the labels on the connectors themselves. Follow the diagram on the harness packaging. And if there's any questions whatsoever, feel free to contact us and we'll be helping you get it sorted out.